we have studied a number of uh, bias circuits to bias a transistor at a constant drain current instead of uh, fixing the gate source voltage okay and they're all shown here there are different choices for uh, where you sense the current and where you apply the feedback to based on that you get four different types of circuits okay now these circuits they use these current sources which are required now of course using a current mirror we can generate a number of uh, current sources from a single current source so that is possible but these current sources are usually more easy to get when you have an integrated circuit okay the economics are slightly different for integrated circuits and discrete component circuits when you have an integrated circuit the number of transistors doesn't matter okay it's the total area that matters whether you use a transistor or a resistor the cost is more or less the same because it's basically based on the area that's occupied by the component in fact it could be that in some processes a resistor is more expensive than a transistor or a capacitor is more expensive than a transistor okay now this is usually not the case when you have discrete component circuits when you buy these discrete components and build circuits around them okay there typically passive components like resistors and capacitors are very inexpensive whereas transistors are a lot more expensive so you would not use another transistor to realize this current source okay and also you may not get uh, sufficiently good matched transistors to realize these current sources and so on okay especially in discrete component circuits and sometimes in integrated circuits there is some motivation to not use a current source like this for biasing okay so let's see what else we can do i'll take one of these as example but exactly the same principle works for anything else okay let me for uh, illustration take some numerical values mu on cox w by l to be 100 microampere per volt square and threshold voltage of 1 volt and let me assume that this current is 200 microamperes okay and if you calculate vgs will come out to be 3 volts okay this current of 200 microamperes corresponds to vgs of 3 volts okay let's say the supply voltage is for illustration 10 volts okay now the question is how do i get rid of this current source okay how do i do that first of all this current source is carrying a current of 200 microampere and it has a voltage of 7 volts across it in this direction okay what i want to show is the distinction between this current source and this voltage source whereas this uh, voltage source here is supplying 200 microamperes and if there are other circuits connected they will be drawing some current i1 and it will be supplying that i1 as well okay the point is this current source it's actually dissipating power okay if you remember how to calculate the power dissipated in a two terminal element you consider the voltage and current according to the passive sign convention that is if the voltage is defined with positive at some terminal current should be going into that terminal then the power dissipated is v times i and the power generated by this would be minus v times i and if you follow that you can see that this current source here it is dissipating 1.4 milliwatts whereas this source is generating 10 volts times 200 microamperes 2 milliwatts assuming i1 is zero okay now you can't replace this voltage source okay this is a source of energy whereas this current source although it could be a source of energy in this particular circuit the voltage across it is such that it's actually dissipating power it's a dissipative element so presumably it can be replaced with another dissipative element and the obvious candidate is the resistor okay so now can we replace this with a resistor i am sure you remember what is known as 
substitution theorem from uh, basic electrical circuits. The substitution theorem says that if you have a circuit with some resistor, it has a voltage V R across it and a current I R through it and of course, R will be equal to V R by I R by Ohm's law. Then, you can replace the resistor with a voltage source of value V R or a current source of value I R without changing any of the node voltages or currents in the circuit. Okay. If you do not recall this, go back to basic electrical circuits and then uh, find out about this theorem. This is known as substitution theorem. Okay. So, essentially a resistor can be replaced by another element which has the same voltage and current across it. By the way, this is not a general substitution. This is only for particular values of sources that are used in the circuit. Okay. You have a circuit with some uh, voltage sources and current sources, they have some particular values. Only for that particular set of values, you could replace a resistor with a voltage source or a current source. Now, it turns out you can also go the other way around. If you have a circuit with some voltage source or a current source, you can replace the voltage or current source by a resistor, provided that the source is dissipating power. Okay. Otherwise, you would have to replace it with a negative resistance and you could get some uh, singular conditions. But if you have a circuit where a current source is dissipating power, you could replace it with a resistor. And what resistor should you replace it with? It should be such that the voltage across it and current through it are exactly same as in the original circuit. Okay. So, for instance, in this case, in this operating point, remember the substitution theorem is uh, true for a particular value of source voltages that is at a particular operating point. So, at this point, we have 7 volts across it and 200 micro amperes through it and we want to replace it with a resistor and the resistor also must have 7 volts across it and 200 micro amperes through it, but of course, a resistor is governed by Ohm's law. So, if a resistor has to have 7 volts across it and 200 micro amperes through it, the value of the resistance has to be 7 volts divided by 200 micro amperes which is 35 kilo ohm. Okay. So, what you can do is you can uh, get rid of this uh, current source okay, and replace it with a resistance of 35 kilo ohm and you will get exactly the same current. Now, if this problem were given to you as an analysis problem, in fact, I would encourage you to solve for it like that. You just take this circuit, let us uh, pretend that you do not know what the current is and solve for the current. You have to solve a quadratic equation and it comes out quite easily and you will see that that will be 200 micro amperes. Okay. So, whether you had a 200 micro ampere current source here or a 35 kilo ohm resistor, you will get exactly the same current. Okay. So, this is used many times. In this particular context, we are looking at replacing current sources by resistors. So, let us say you have a circuit and you have a current source of value I naught somewhere and the voltage across that is some V x, let us say and V x is greater than 0. It is only in that case that this will be dissipating power and you can replace it with a resistor. Then, you can replace the current source by a resistor R x and the value of R x of course, has to be equal to V x divided by I naught and the conditions in the circuit that is the voltages and currents in the circuit will remain exactly the same. Okay. And this can be done for any circuit, all of the biasing circuits that we discussed earlier uh, for particular values of uh, supply and so on, you need to know the numerical values of everything. Then, you can replace the current source in those biasing circuits with a resistor and the bias conditions will remain exactly the same. Okay. Now, if a resistor is as good as a current source, then why would you ever want to use a current source? Now, not everything is exactly the same. Okay. For instance, let me take the circuit again. So, I had a 10 volt source and a 35 kilo ohm resistor okay. and 
I have my original circuit with a 200 microampere current source. Okay. So now let me call this M1 and M2. Remember, the whole idea of uh, using constant current biasing was to reduce the sensitivity of uh, the transistor's transconductance to the parameters of the transistor, such as the threshold voltage and current factor. Okay. Now that sensitivity will be different for this circuit and that circuit. Okay. So let's say the threshold voltage of M2 changes by some amount. The current through it will still be exactly 200 microamperes. Okay. So the transconductance of M2 doesn't change at all. This is the easiest example to consider. So let's say Vt increases. M2 has a current of uh, 200 microamperes and Gm is 200 micro siemens. Basically, neither of these changes. Okay. Whereas in this case, if the threshold voltage increases and if you have carried out that earlier exercise I mentioned of trying to solve for the current here, you will see that the current will change. I d will actually reduce slightly and G m also reduces. It is still very likely to be much better than constant V g s biasing, but it is not as good as biasing it with an actual current source. Okay. So, a resistor is really a poor man's current source, but sometimes just for the sake of convenience you can use that. Okay. And as you can guess, the equivalent resistance, the incremental resistance of a current source is infinity. So, the larger the value of this resistance, the more closely it approximates a current source. Okay. So, for instance, that you also know from Thevenin and Norton equivalents, if you have a large voltage and a large resistance in series with it, then it behaves more or less like a current source for small values of load resistance. Okay. So, exactly the same thing works here. If this resistor happens to be very large and if this voltage is very large, then it will tend to behave like a current source. Okay. So, that is one difference. The sensitivity is actually worsened when you use a resistor and also there is additional sensitivity to something else. Okay. If you change the supply voltage 10 volts, what happens to M2? Absolutely nothing because it does not even uh, see the change in that voltage. All of the change will appear across this 200 microampere current source. Okay. So, there will be no change in the current or transconductance of M2. Whereas, if you change the voltage to M1, I mean if you change the supply voltage, M1's current will change. If this becomes uh, 12 volts instead, the current in M1 will increase. Okay. So, the sensitivity to supply voltage will be 0 in this case and non-zero in that case. Okay. So, this is inferior to having a constant current source, but it is superior to having a constant VGS. Okay. The motivation to use this is simply to avoid uh, current sources, especially in case of discrete circuits. The analysis of sensitivity and so on, you can carry out in activity and assignment problems. Okay. Then you will clearly understand why and by how much this is worse than that one. Okay.